Hello folks and welcome back to another tutorial of Titan Games Lab. This is another game mechanics tutorial, Breeze Game Mechanics. Uh, quick tutorial to show you how to make a throwing game, just like the popular knife hit game. So this is what we'll be making in this session. So the objectives for this session is just a basic understanding of how a circumference works, this is just for our positioning in the game a basic understanding of the save machine and create an awesome game mechanic like this one you're seeing on the screen so in this game I can actually have uh, a knife that when I press space is gonna throw it to the target and I keep, can keep adding knives until I hit another knife and when that happens the game will restart okay from that you can boot upon that and do a very fun game so basically the understanding of circumferences so I have an X and a Y axis on a Cartesian plane and if I add a circumference to it I will have some uh, information that I need to that. First thing I need the center so that's CX and CY are the center of my circumference and then I'll have a radius also and let's say I want to find a point on that circumference like this little white dot here what I also need is I know that the dots always one radius of distance of the center and it's within an angle of that initial uh, radius that I drew which is usually to the uh, let's say to the right so that's zero and then you start rotating uh, counterclockwise and that's then when the angle grows all the way up to 360 or if you're already working radians that's 2 pi so basically the equation to find this dot uh, is going to be x equals my center x center plus my radius times my cosine of my angle and the y position is the same thing i just switch cosine by sine and then you're gonna say no but in game maker the y axis doesn't start uh, on the bottom and grows as you go to the top it's inverted so how, how do i do it so basically if i invert my y axis the only thing i have to do is switch around my equation so instead of adding my sine of the angle times the radius I just subtract it from the formula and it works perfectly okay so why do I need to do that and why do I need to find this position basically my circumference is my target and my uh, little dot my position is gonna be my knife so I need to know that in order to have the knives when they get hit they hit the target they start rotating the target in the right position and also we will use a state machine so what is a state machine it's basically i have different states like in this game i'll have the waiting state i'll have the throw state so the waiting state will make the player go to the throw state the throw state will make either the player go to the hit state or to the die state which will restart the game to go into the waiting state or the first object so basically i'm switching between states and with that the code makes more much more sense how do I do to have a state machine that works properly? I use an enumerator. So on my create event, I usually use an enum function. So we'll have that doing the wait, throw, hit, and die state. And then I'm gonna set my initial state on my create, create event also. So my state is gonna be equal state.waiting. And on either my draw event or my step event or whenever I need it, I can use a switch statement. So I'll switch to my state and I can select the state I'm in and within these states I'm gonna do all this state uh, moving around so my throw state will either make me go to my die state or my hit state and like that so let's head to Game Maker Studio and see how we're gonna code this okay so let's get to it so first I'm gonna create some sprites so let's get me asset, my asset folder and there we go. So I'll add a knife sprite. I'm gonna set my origin to about halfway through the sprite. And that's very important because that's how you get the depth that the knife goes into the target. And then I'm gonna add my oh sorry, this is sprite knife. And there we go. So I was important to name everything properly. And then I'm gonna add my target. So sprite target and add a target and center it perfect i'm gonna add a new room 
as always going to be 405 by 720 and I'm going to add my objects. So I'm going to start by adding my target object, it's pretty easy, it's just a target. And I'm going to add my object knife, there you go, let me set the sprite correctly, okay. Let me set both of them in my room, so I'm gonna, okay, target looks good, let me add the knife. And knife about here is good, okay. There you go. So on the knife object, I'm gonna start the coding. So on my create event, first thing I'm gonna do is start my state machine, and I'll do that by doing my enumerator. So enumerator state, and I'm gonna have the waiting state, the throw state, the hit state, and the die state. There you go. Now I'm going to set my state to the waiting state. That's the first state that I want to have in the game. And I want to get my distance to the target so I can calculate how many steps it will take for me to reach the target when I'm throwing. So it's going to be my Y minus the target Y. And that's my variable distance. Let's go to my step event. There we go. And in my step event, I want to start the state machine. So as always, that's where the magic happens. So it's going to be a switch statement, my state, and I'm going to add all the cases. So let's start with case state dot waiting. Break. And there you go. Let me copy this. And okay. So I'll have all my four states correctly. So my second state is going to be state dot throw. Third one is going to be state dot hit, and the last one state dot die. Let me remove this. Okay, so let's start with the waiting state. Basically, what I'm doing in this state is checking for the input of the player. So if the keyboard key pressed, okay, uh, the space is pressed. So I'm going to use keyboard check pressed, and if the player Presses the keyboard. I'm just gonna stay, switch my state to state throw, and with that, I can go to the next state. That state throw. So in this state, uh, we're gonna do a couple things. So the first thing we're gonna do is check if we reach the target. So in the, that's where we're gonna move our knife. That's in this state. So the first thing I'm gonna check if is my y is equal to my target y. Okay, there we go. So have I reached the target? My Y position is equal to my target position or less than that. So have I gone through the target and gone over it? So if I have, I'm gonna set my Y to my target, my target Y also. So I'm gonna fix my position in the screen. And then I'm gonna get the angle of the target. So since the target's rotating, I wanna know the initial angle where I hit it. So I'm gonna save that to initial angle variable. And I'm gonna create a new knife, uh, object knife instance. Let me get the position correct. So it's gonna be 192 by 448. So I'm gonna want to create a new instance at 192.448, comma, object knife. So I'm creating a new knife so the player can keep playing. Since the knife that we have just thrown is gonna be not available to uh, do anything else but show screen so so if I have not reached my target what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move towards my target so my Y position is gonna equals my last Y position minus my distance divided by five that give me gives me about one sixth of a second to reach the target and I'm gonna check also if I have hit any other knife on the way so I'm gonna use place meeting collision check yes so on my X position Y position and with the O knife object, so have I hit any other knife while going through the game? If I have hit other knife, then I'm just gonna change my state to state.i. So that's how I know the game is over. Okay. And I'm gonna use some random variables here. So I'm gonna set my vertical speed to a random range between 10 and 35. My horizontal speed to a random range of 0 or 3 to 10 and my rotation speed uh, this is going to be a variable that I'm going to use later on 
rod speed is going to be random range between 0 and minus 30. So this is just to give some randomness when I hit the knife. What will happen is that I might not get thrown back. And I forgot here, so when I, I reach my my position, I also have to change my state to state.hit. So I just added, added up that on top. So now I'm going to switch my to my state hit and I'm going to switch my image angle. It's going to be my target image angle minus the initial angle when I hit the target. And with that, I can make the actual knife rotate along with the target. Okay, so it's going to spin the knife uh, with the same angle that the target is spinning. And I'm going to set my, oh, my X position to my target X, that's my center of my circumference, plus 80, that's my radius, times cosine, and then we convert degrees to radians of my image angle, minus 90. Minus 90 here is important because my knife is facing upwards. If it was facing the right side, I wouldn't need it, but I have to correct for this angle difference. And then for the Y, I'm just going to switch everything to Y, and instead of adding the cosine, I'm going to subtract the sine since the angle is inverted. And on my state dot I, I'm going to rotate my knife also, but just using the road speed that was a random range. And I'm going to check if my Y position is greater than or equal to my room height. That means that the knife has gone below the room. I'm just going to start the game over. So I'm going to use a room restart function to do that. And that's how the game restarts. So room restart. And there we go. So with that, we should have everything working. Okay. I'm just gonna add a depth of 10 to my knife also, so it goes behind the target. And on my on my target object, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna set a step event, and I'm gonna add five to my image angle every step, so that makes the target rotate. Now let's try it. Okay. So it works almost correctly. I'm having some issues here. When the knife hits the target, it's not doing the proper position after hitting. So let's correct this. Let me check my step event and let me find out what's going on. So on my throw state. So what I'm doing is I'm checking if my Y position is equal to my target dot Y. Okay, that's a, that's a mistake. So my target, target has a radius, I have to add this radius to my equations. So I just added to the Y position and I have to add it to my if statement also. Okay, so the basics of the game is, are here. You can see it's working properly. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just add some spicy to it. So I'm adding a background because I hate this gray background of Game Maker. So I'm going to do that by using a draw rectangle color. Then we'll fill my background on the draw begin event. And I'm going to make a color from RGB. And this color is going to be a light blue. That's the top left corner. So it's going to be 129, 236, 236. I'm going to copy this. I have to use it four times. I'm going to switch the, sec the third and the fourth time to 0, 208. 206, 201, and that's a darker blue. And no outline. And I'm gonna add my draw event, regular draw event, and draw myself. Sorry, draw self function. So the tar target gets drawn. And let's test it out. It looks good. Perfect. I just don't like uh, how the heat precision is working for me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch that out also. So I'm going to modify my mask and I'm going to just shrink it a little bit on the sides. And there you go. And make sure you have precision collision checking. And let's do the last test. Perfect. Now the game is working perfectly. Uh, pretty easy project to do. Very easy. You can then go ahead and change the speed of the target, make it rotate to one side, to the other side, accelerate, decelerate. You can switch the knives around by switching the 
sprite of this, the knives and that's basically it. As always, if you like the video, please click on that like button. If you want to subscribe to my channel, please click on that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when I publish new videos, click on that bell button. For me, it's very important to have your feedback. So if you have any comments, doubts, any suggestions, improvements and all that, please leave that on my comment section. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll try to make a lot more. Thank you and see you next.